it's a lot like Stripe, you know, where you can like create a license. It's a REST API, a JSON API. So yeah, you can go in. A lot of this can be done in with a UI, you know, going in and creating licenses. In most cases, creating licenses is done in like, you know, an integration with a payment provider like Stripe, you know, using a web Webpack integration or using Zapier or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of, you know, like a REST API, you create licenses, uh, you can validate the licenses. Um, you have some offline licensing capabilities, and then you, you can manage machines, which are pretty much your devices uh, for individual licenses. You know, you can go and fingerprint the machine, you know, like use your, uh, like operating system, uh, and do a fingerprint of a motherboard or anything, really anything that like, so Keygen doesn't do any fingerprinting itself. So it's just like a rest API. Um, so, you know, some people will use like a Docker container ID. They'll use the Mac address, an IP address, a domain name, kind of it's to whatever your business requires. And that's what you use there. In this case, it's a, probably like a Mac address and then, uh, you know, office mask MacBook. So you pretty much activate that and then you use that fingerprint when you're um, going in and doing a license validation. And you're pretty much saying, is this license key valid for this device? And, you know, Keygen will come back and say yes, or it'll say, no, it's not activated yet. And then you'll go through an activation step. Uh, so that next time, you know, it'll be valid. And so the API can be integrated, you know, client side. It's a pretty, pretty big API, but you know, most, most client side integrations use about five API endpoints, mostly around like license validation, offline checkouts, which is like a encrypted license file and then act machines and self-managing machines. If you, for example, have a desktop app that you sell three seats for or three devices, you know, which is typical for like Mac software. You know, you're like that you buy a license for three devices. You can integrate Keygen entirely client side. And so you can do that in a way that your users can manage their own activations. You know, so if they hit that three device limit, you can go in and create a UI that lists all their current devices and, you know, has like a, a CRUD interface, so like they can delete them or rename them or um, whatever. So super powerful. Uh, you can get down to entitlements which are pretty much just like a, a feature flag. Uh, you can attach these to licenses. Uh, so you can check inside of your software, a uh, client side, which entitlements uh, the license has and like flip on and off features. Yeah. And then you can manage users. There's a lot more, there's a, uh, there's some more complex components to the licensing API, uh, you know, like hardware components on a machine. If you want to activate, for example, uh, the GPU, the CPU, the motherboard and the hard drive IDs, but you don't really care if like two out of those change. You only care if all four change. You can set up uh, kind of matching. We have like a matching engine that you can set up kind of more sophisticated fingerprinting strategies so you don't get false positives or false negatives where you're like the same device gets shows up as not being activated when it actually is, when all they did was like change out a hard drive or something. And then you can manage individual processes, you know, controlling application concurrency, um, you know, like if you sold a AI, you know, self-hosted AI business and you wanted to like make sure that they didn't, you know, run four processes at one time um, across all of their machines. You just wanted to, they, they have a license to like one, run one application instance at one time. You can do that this way. So you can enforce like, it, you, you don't really care how many machines they have. You just care how many application processes are running at one time. And so you can do that this way. You know, it's super powerful. Like Keygen's very like, it doesn't, it's not opinionated. So, you know, you can use it to, you know, implement a ton of different licensing models, just depending on what you want to do with your business model. Um, and so that's one thing that I've been wanting that I've been focusing on with Keygen is making it work for everyone. Um, you know, just a lot of different customizations and ways to do things because everyone does things differently. If I've learned anything over the last eight years, it's that everyone does billing differently. Everyone has a different licensing model. So having an API that has a lot of flexibility has been a, a big plus. And then, uh, yeah, in addition to licensing, Keygen also handles distribution. So, you know, you can distribute like Atari application and, you know, integrate automatic updates. Uh, you can then do a Electron application and do automatic updates. You know, Keygen C uh, command line tool. We use Keygen to dis distribute that, um, you know, distributing the Go binaries. I mean, the easiest way to get started is just go into the 
home page and clicking sign up and then it sets you up with a free trial or a, a free account so i have a free tier uh, it's a limited free tier um, but that's typically the quickest way to get started but uh, you know you can take it for a demo on the dashboard um, to kind of see what it looks like you can mm-hmm. kind of see what you get but yeah you know Keygen's fair source so if you don't you know you don't want anything that you know Keygen starts at 20 or 49 dollars a month uh, once you move off of the the free tier which the free tier gives you 50 licenses of 50 active license users and so you know if you have 50 license users you should be able to afford 49 dollars a month but if not uh, you know you can sell those keygen uh, for free license so yeah we yeah i don't know how much you charge i don't integrate with your stripe account or anything like that nope and i never plan on doing that kind of percentage based you know uh, pricing model i'm pretty pretty against that so yeah just a flat fee what and for uh, self hosting yeah for self hosting yeah there's some self hosting docs you know it's mainly based on docker so you know you can uh, just do you know you can pull the docker container and then do docker compose and you should be set up um mm. that's about it it's super easy to self host i mean it's just a ruby on rails app so it's not it's not a uh, super complicated you can throw it up on pretty much any any big hosting platform, platform as a service, and should be relatively easy. Commercial open source project that sells enterprise licenses can just plug this in and immediately get running, no? Yeah, I mean, the first off, if you do, you know, have an open source project and you're like kind of going down that open core route, I'd look at the fair core license. Um, Cause it, and maybe read a couple of my blog posts on Twitter uh, or not on Twitter, on a key gen. Uh, Because it goes into like kind of the pros and cons of open core and how fair the fair core license and fair source might be actually be a better route for all of you for your customers that you know you sell to. Because open core, you sell an enterprise edition typically. I mean, you have some core that you're selling or some proprietary part that isn't a part of the core. In the long run, I think fair core is a better licensing model there. But yeah, and you know, the fair core license, you know, uses license keys. For that, so, you know, Keygen's a perfect fit there. But you know, like if you take other projects, you can go super simple and just do like a hard coded string at first. That's what Plausible is doing. You really don't have to do anything fancy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your time. 